Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This lecture is on preloaded tension joints. Specifically, how to determine the effective diameter for the various members that are being squeezed together by a bolt. I have found that many students don't understand this, and that means many aerospace professionals could perhaps benefit from this idea as well. Let's take a look at a typical fastener joint. For example, if we have a bolt with a washer, and let's go ahead and just, uh, let's start with a, let's say we have three plates. Now remember, this means we have a bolt going through here. This means we have another washer and we have a nut. And in order to determine the member stiffnesses, we're going to need to calculate the stiffness of each member. Now what we're going to do is fan our load out by whatever assumed angle we're using. And typically, uh, angles between Common angles would be 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, with more folks potentially arriving around this 30 degree as a representative number. However, there's a lot of value. This is an approximate calculation, and so there's value in keeping it simple and using that 45 degrees. I have another video on this, so I'm going to focus on the difference uh, with multiple plates. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from underneath the washer where we're going to assume that everything beneath that washer, as long as the washer is not too much larger than the bolt head and as long as it's not too thin, if it's fairly thick, we could probably assume that the entire washer is squeezed plus some uh, members below. And the idea is what we have to do is find the effective diameter at the mid plane of each and every plate. Now the problem is, uh, I in my book and in my other lectures, I give a little formula for this, which really focuses on a two-plate member. And so students get wrapped around the axle when they're trying to calculate it on a multiple plate angle. So what we're going to need to do, you'll notice there are two cone angles. We're coming from the upper washer down and from the lower washer up. So there's actually two potential diameters. If we focus on this first plate, we can see there is this diameter. Uh, let me switch back to this other color. The one cone coming from the upper surface will show that as orange, and the lower cone coming from the lower surface will show that as red. Though both of these go through the midplane of the plate, although this isn't drawn very well. You'll notice that's two totally different diameters. Obviously, the one that's most appropriate for use would be the smaller of those two, which means from the upper. What that means is we're going to have an effective diameter for plate number one is going to be this diameter from here to here. Now, so what we need to do is find what is the dis distance from the squeezing surface, that's the washer, to the midplane of the plate. Okay, that is the distance we need. Let's go ahead and introduce a new variable. We'll just call this, uh, mm, what, uh, how about, let's call it, uh, I want to call it D, but that can get confused with other variables. How about we'll call it E. E is the distance from the squeezing surface to the midplane of the plate. Now you'll notice here, this value E, before we get to our diameter, E for plate one, is going to be coming from the upper plate. It's going to be the washer diameter, or excuse me, this distance is just T over two, okay? T one over two. So our effective diameter from plate one would be D outer washer, the washer outer diameter plus, and now you'll notice since we're using a 45 degree angle, that means whatever distance we move down E is the same distance we're going to move out, and we're going to do it on both sides. So that's going to mean it's, we're going to go twice that distance E, which is just T over 2. So that is our effective diameter. Now, if we had come, 
This is the effective diameter moving from the upper surface. We also have an effective diameter one coming from the lower surface. That's this lower washer's outer diameter, the outer washer. This is the outer washer upper, outer washer lower. And now that effective, that E dimension is T, this, well, let's call this plate one, two, three. This is T3 plus T2 plus that E dimension. Let's insert that, actually, let's do this. Grab this, pull it down a little bit. The E dimension for that is for a, uh, for one coming from a lower is going to be T3 plus T2 plus T1 over two. Now, when we move our diameter calculation come from the bottom, that means we have DO of the washer, lower washer, plus two times that distance, which means we're, we've got that T3 plus T2 plus T1 over two. Obviously, this, uh, this one here coming from the upper is the critical and so that is the effective diameter we will use in our KM for one. Okay, when we get to plate number two, for plate two we have two, we have D uh, effective of plate two coming from the upper and that will be now our E of two upper is going to be T1, uh, T1 plus T2 over 2. So this is going to be D washer upper plus 2 times T1 plus T2 over 2. And coming from a lower, D effective of 2 from the lower is going to be D washer lower. This is D outer uh, plus 2 times. And now our distance is T3 plus T2 over 2. And then we have, obviously, it's going to be the smaller of these two. Now, if this is symmetric, if these all have the same thickness, or if plate 1 and 3 have the same thickness, then these two will give us the same number. But if these all have different thicknesses, there's no telling whichever washer is closer, whichever compressing surface is closer will be the driving or the dominant dimension. Then our third one we're going to use, it's obvious it's going to be coming from the lower, but we'll go ahead and calculate both. We have D effective for member three coming from the upper is going to be D washer upper outer plus two times. And now what we've got is T1 plus T2 plus T3 over two. That's how, you, how far you go down. So that's how much you're going to fan out two times that. And then your D effective of three coming from the lower would be D washer lower outer plus two times. And now you just have T3 over two, which will always be dominant. So for the third one, this is obviously the one we're going to use. For the first one, this is obviously the one we're going to use. And for the second plate, it will be whichever of these is smaller. Now, if we had multiple plates, it would be the same kind of thing. Let's take a quick look at how that looks. Let's just say we have a washer here with the bolt that goes like this and a nut. Now let's say we have plate one, plate two, plate three, plate four, plate five. Okay. Let's call this one, two, three, four, five. Let's say we're looking for the KM of member four. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get two values. We're gonna have D washer, excuse me, D of four coming from the, uh, if this is effective, right? This is gonna be coming from the upper, that will be T of the, uh, excuse me, D outer washer upper plus two times, and then the distance coming from the upper will be T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 over two. T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 over two. And then if we have that D4 effective coming from the lower, 
is going to be D washer outer lower, that's this diameter, plus, and the distance coming up to this plate center will be two times, we've got T, uh, excuse me, that's T5 plus T4 over 2. That is this distance. We're going to do that twice because we go up that much. That means we're going out that much if we have a tangent of the angle. And that's how we get, we choose the smaller of these two, which is obviously going to be this. Now, if you choose to use a different cone angle, no problem, then you just are going to go that distance. And, uh, and you're going to go, if that angle cone angle is this, then that means we're going to be using that tangent of the angle because we're going to be moving down and moving out. So you use the, the distance tangent rather than the full dimension like we have here. So that's how you do it for multiple plates. It is critical to understand this for students and industry professionals. If uh, you need more than just getting that effective diameter in order to use that effective diameter, you need to go back and watch the source video, lecture 12, which goes into the details of how we're doing stiffness calculations. Then there's 12B uh, on a supplement on this topic and then this video to help even more since students still seem to be missing this idea. So study that, become great. And then in order to do fatigue uh, of that joint, then you'll go ahead and watch the next video, lecture 13. We'll go into fatigue, how you're going to use these stiffnesses for doing fatigue analysis. Enjoy.